It's a pleasure to have you once again this week on the Link Edition. We continue to give you information you can use. Be sure that whenever you are here, if you listen carefully, there's something that you can use on one day or another. And we strive to keep that promise. Thank you for always joining us. And tonight we're discussing financial literacy, so to speak, but how you invest your money. We have touched this topic before, but because of public demand, the questions keep popping up. People who have got their... Um, 20% NSSF, and then they have got a windfall, or they have sold land, land and they have a chunk of money, and they, are, they don't want to burn it down through uh, expenditures, which they will regret. They want to put it somewhere. And we're discussing the two options, so the bonds and unit trusts. In the studio, I have my guest who has been here before, and I'll bring him back again on these issues, Mr. Joseph Ereo, independent financial advisor, and formerly worked with uh, International Finance Corporation, IFC, and Uganda Government Bank. Joseph, welcome back again. Thank you very much, Sam. Thank you. We need to go back to these bonds. Uh, bonds, that's government bonds, or treasury bonds, and unit trusts. Nowadays, there's a lot of vibe around them, but people keep on asking, mm -hmm. explain to me, even the other day somebody was asking me. So first, briefly tell us, how do bonds and unit trusts work, and how can they get involved? Thank you, Sam. Uh, viewers, welcome and uh, thank you again for uh, watching this show and I'm glad to be back. Uh, Sam's a very, a very good question. Mm. So bonds and unit trusts. Yeah. So essentially, what are bonds? Um, a bond is basically a loan, a loan to the issue of that bond, mm -hmm. in our case, the government. So you, you loan you give a loan to the government. Exactly, mm -hmm. or the government borrows from you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the government borrows from you, and um, uh, the, the, the borrowing on certain well-specified terms, number one, mm -hmm. that they will pay you a certain um, amount of interest. Okay. To put it loosely, we call it coupons, mm -hmm. which they usually pay every six months, okay. uh, so twice a year. And the, the interest rate is usually specified and fixed, mm -hmm. okay? And then number two, after a certain agreed period of time, so it could be 10 years, yeah. it could be 20 years, it could be two years, yeah. you will be paid back your principal. So uh, the, mon the money you, you, you lent uh, them. Well, yes, the money you, you put in or you invested, we call it, technically, we call it the face value. Okay. Of, of, the, of the bond, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. So that basically is the, uh, the contract, if you like, uh, for, for the bond. Okay. Um, and there's a guarantee, you are guaranteed a certain interest or coupon, and you are guaranteed that after a period of time, mm -hmm. you'll be paid that So you amount. said uh, they pay uh, interest every six months. That means they remain with my principal. Yes. But the interest accrued will be paid every six months. Exactly. So uh, at least in our country, yeah. the, uh, most of, I mean, the bonds are basically structured that way. In, there are other types of bonds, but for purposes of our country in mm -hmm. our market, that's how they are structured. So they hold on to your money for that period of time yeah. agreed, and then, but every six months they pay you that, that coupon. So if they said uh, the annual interest rate is say, 10% um, yeah. or 15%. So that means after six months, they will pay you half of that. 5%. Okay, 5% mm. to 6 or 7%. Yeah. Another six months, they will pay you the other half. Mm. Less the taxes, the withholding taxes. We'll come to that issue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. let's go to unit trust. Yes. Mm. Now, a unit trust is an investment vehicle, yeah. okay, through which several investors, small, medium, even large-scale mm. investors, they could be uh, circles, investment groups, individuals, they pool money, they aggregate, they pool money together mm. under the management of a fund manager. So there's a manager? There is a manager, mm. okay? Very important, there is a manager. Um, so that manager has the responsibility then of well, of course, mm -hmm. managing the money, mm -hmm. but more specifically, investing that mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. on behalf of and for the benefit of all the investors 
in proportion to the amount of money each investor has put yeah. in yeah. and the amount of time mm. for how long you have put in that money. So, of course, the more money you put in, the more uh, rewards you get. But also, if you put the money and leave it for a long time, then you are bound to to benefit a lot mm. more. So, so uh, amount and time. Yes, are very very crucial. Mm. Very, in fact. I, yes, the amount of and time are very crucial. You can also say, of course, the, the interest rate or the rate of return is important. Yeah. But however good the, the rate is, if you put the money today and next week you pull it out, well, you're not going to, to benefit a lot. Mm. Okay? And, uh, of course, like I said, the, the amount. Now, this money, as I said, number one is managed very important yeah. but number two it's regulated mm. by the capital markets authority i mean the, the investment is regulated by the capital markets authority and uh number three it is invested within strict terms uh, as, as stipulated in what we call the investment policy document which is managed by what we call a, a trustee let's quickly go joseph to the issue of um, how do I get involved? Let's start with bonds. Right. I hear this bond, I have my uh, 10 million. Yes. How do I get involved? Okay. So government issues bonds once every month. Yeah. Okay. And it's usually published in, in the press. Mm. And uh, the bonds are usually issued or uh, yeah, administered through the commercial banks. Okay. Basically all licensed banks. Yeah. Um, are eligible to administer this bond. So basically all you need to do, so two things you need to do. Firstly, you need to open um, an account, okay? A security is what we call a securities deposit uh, account. A CD. Okay, mm. exactly. Mm. And a CSD, Central Securities Deposit Account, okay? okay? And that's a simple, straightforward process. You just get, um, uh, forms you go to your bank with my they'll bank. give you forms mm. but you can also download those forms uh, through the internet you go mm -hmm. to Bank of Uganda website oh. you download those forms you fill them you will need some passport size photos and basically straightforward requirements mm. national ID yeah. and within about two days that account should be open okay okay once that account is open then once government announces that look on the following day, mm. we are going to issue uh, this particular bond on the following terms. Then you basically go to your bank. You don't need to go to Bank of Uganda. You go to your commercial bank, yeah. whether it is Centenary or Post Bank or uh, APSA. They should give us money for advertising. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They then will be able to basically bid for the bond on your behalf okay okay um so uh, some of them will charge you something small some will not charge you mm. anything they will they will tell you the, okay. the terms under which they do that unit trust how do yes. i get involved a uh, unit trust how do you get involved very simple so there are uh, about four or five licensed fund managers mm. in our country um i can name them uh, I'm not advertising for them, but this is public information. You have uh, Old Mutual, yeah. you have um, Sandlam, you have ICEA, you have uh, Britam, uh, you have Zeno. Okay. And, and Stanbeck, of uh, 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 Yeah, and uh, the Stanbeck there. I, I might have forgotten a few, but uh, yes. The, the main point is that should be a licensed fund manager okay okay so i have my 10 million uh, so you have your 10 million basically uh, get the application forms to open an account with that particular fund manager all right yeah. and fill it send it to them they will obviously require what we call kyc mm. know your customer documentation national, national id, ID mm. uh, passport size photo and you have to prove that you have an account with a w with a commercial bank mm. once all that is in order they open the account for you and then you deposit your 10 million through a bank at which they designate as what we call a custodian bank. Okay. Okay. So this money doesn't go 
to that particular fund manager's account, it goes to a custodian bank. Okay. So you go to that bank, any branch of that bank, and you, you can deposit the money there. In, in some cases, you can even uh, use mobile money to okay. transfer your money to that account. You can transfer money from, um, I mean, through e EFT. Account, yes. Absolutely. Mm. So, and, and, and basically that is the process. And every, every month they will be sending you um, statements, statements mm. telling you the status of your account, how it is growing, and, uh, and that kind of thing. Time is running out on our side. Yes. <laughs> and I feel, <laughs> but a quick question. Yes. Which is better? I have my 10 million, I'm thinking bonds, yes. I'm thinking unit trusts. Uh -huh. We sort of have like two minutes. Okay. Which one is better? Okay. Which one is better? That is not a very good, <laughs> that's not a good way to put it, uh, Sam, because mm. each of these products have, serve a certain purpose. Mm. So viewers, you will remember I told you some time back, the first and most important question you should ask yourself is why? What why? is ob the objective mm. of me investing this money? Because that will determine whether you should buy a bond or unit, unit trust, trust or indeed something else. Yeah. Okay. So if you are looking for a bond, usually the reason for buying a bond would be um, to get regular predictable income mm, every six months every six months mm. so that's why a bond would be good for a, a retiree mm. uh, you don't have a salary anymore okay but you, you are used to a well-planned financial life yeah. so a bond comes in very perfect mm. okay so regular income number two um, a bond will be useful if you want to plan what we call liability management that mm. means Suppose you have, say, school fees, you have to pay, you know that every semester, which is about half a year, yeah. you have to pay a certain amount in school fees. Let's go to unit trust. Exactly. In one minute, Joseph. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so unit trust. Yes. Um, what would, how would I apply the, uh, we can't say which is better. So unit trust, who, who goes to unit trust? So unit trust mm. would be excellent if you are looking for growth. Okay. So you... You have your income, mm. but this is money you want to grow mm. over time. You're okay? not in a hurry to spend it. Absolutely. Mm. A unit trust comes in very handy. Why? Because it compounds okay. over time. Remember we talked about compounding? Yeah. The interest is reinvested and, and that accelerates more. the growth. Mm. So a unit trust is excellent for growth purposes. Thank you very much, John. <laughs> I cut you short. <laughs> it's okay. I feel very bad. <laughs> uh, viewers. <sighs> Honestly, you can rally for me to get more time so that you get this. We have not discussed the risks of going to which, which one as we wanted to do. But as I promised, I brought him back. I'll bring him back more on these uh, topics. Probably we'll do a special session online for you if we find uh, the, the opportunity. That was the link. Thank you for joining us tonight.